Hi, I'm George. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm here in Little Venice and there's actually an event going on which is the London Plain Air Group and they meet up once a month on the first Saturday of every month and today they're here in Little Venice and they're painting the beautiful scenes behind me. So I've painted here once before but I'm very excited to paint here again because there's so many beautiful spots to paint. There's a lot of, uh, it's a nice sunny day so there's a lot of colour getting reflected into the water and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun trying to paint some reflections, some boats, uh, maybe a few trees and a few people. So let's get into this painting. Remember to please subscribe to my channel. Here I'm just going to set out my colours and my palette. Starting with titanium white. And I'm going to work myself from light through to dark. And here's going to be light warm colours through to cool colours. Using a mix of different brands of paint, some Michael Hardin, some Winsor & Newton, some uh, Cranfield colours. And last but not least, Ultramarine Blue. So that's my palette I'm going to work with today. The medium I'm going to use is just going to be some low odor artist thinners. And now it's uh, time to start painting. I'm going to use this so you can see what I'm doing closer up. So now we're all ready and set up. Let's start. So here I'm just mapping in the very start of the painting. Divided my panel horizontally and vertically, um, just so I can sketch in the general shapes of the composition first. Working from the big shapes, uh, trying to squint to the scene and see things as big blocks of tonal value. Trying to sketch this impression in first, and as I go, I'll get more specific with uh, certain areas trying to simplify the, the scene as, as much as possible Here I start painting the dark reflections of the trees in the water. As the colour mix is similar for the reflections of the background trees and the trees which are closer to the foreground on the left hand side, I use the same colour mix to cover both areas and I apply the paint thinly as I will paint more specific colour reflections and details on top of this initial layer. Using a broad hog bristle filbert brush, I paint in the trees in the background and simplify them into light values 
and a shadow value. The light sections are warmer than the shadow color as the warm sunlight is shining into the golden yellows and orange hues of the autumn leaves. And the brush that I use is quite old and rough and this is helpful in capturing the texture and appearance of these leaves without having to paint in too many small details. Here I'm painting this willow tree which sits by itself on an island in the lake so it's actually slightly further forward than the background line of trees. And to paint this I use a similar technique making one colour mix on my palette for the light sections of the tree, the areas which are getting hit by sunlight and then another section for the shadow mix and in order to create this effect of the willow which has all its leaves and branches draping down I drag the brush which is loaded with the light mix vertically down the painting and to paint in the dark mix I do a similar thing but drag this mix up the painting and in some areas I will change the approach to applying the paint but in general I'm applying these colour mixes in a vertical manner. To paint the sky I start by painting in the underbelly of the clouds, this section where the clouds are darkest and this has a slightly purplish hue to it and I'm now going in with some light blue paint which is a mix of cerulean blue, titanium white and a touch of ultramarine blue into the sky and then going in with thicker paint and I'll paint in the white sections of the clouds, the clouds which are catching the most light and I also add a very small touch of my lemon yellow to this mix just to give it that slightly golden glow that the clouds receive when they are lit by sunlight. paint the canal boat in the foreground, I mix a shadow mix using mostly alizarin crimson, raw umber, ultramarine blue and a touch of titanium white and I first paint down the areas of the boat which were in shadow. Once I painted in these sections of the boat which were in shadow, I then go in and paint a lighter mix for the other sections of the boat. Also on the very top of the boat where the roof faces up towards the sky there's a lot of blue reflected light from the sky going into this shiny metallic surface of the boat so I'm adding quite a bit of ultramarine blue to the light mix for the top of the boat. I'm just painting this boat in the foreground and I'm trying to get the mix of the main colours for the areas in shadow and the areas which are getting lit by the sky. So you've got quite a nice blue uh, light getting cast into the light sections of the, the boat. So yeah, I'm just trying to mix these colours on my palette and then um, put them down on the painting. One thing I find which is helpful when painting reflections is not to just get stuck at looking into the water and trying to chase the shapes, but to actually look above the reflection and really observe the shapes of the object, or in this case the tree, which is getting reflected into the water. And that way you can understand 
the patterns which are going on within the reflection of the water a lot better. And here I'm just adding some blue paint where the sky is breaking through the tree. And I'm applying this paint quite thickly in an impasto fashion. So here I'm using some smaller brushes to add in some smaller details. Still trying to get a lot of the, the different shifts in colour temperature on the boat in the foreground. Using a rough hog bristle brush, I'm applying a lighter mix of paint onto this tree. I'm using a technique known as dry brushing. I pick up the paint from my palette with a dry brush, so I haven't mixed it with any of my medium. And the paint just sits on the bristles of this brush. And as I drag it down over the tree, it's given the effect of the leaves which are catching the light. Here I'm painting some figures onto the waterside path using a very fine brush and by painting these people in it helps add scale and perspective to the scene as well as adding some additional visual interest. I hope you enjoyed that video if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel you can also follow me on instagram at george frederick thomas thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video